ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿಗಳೇ ಹತ್ತನೇ ತರಗತಿಯ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ನ ಈ ಕಲರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಪಾಠವನ್ನು ಸರಳವಾಗಿ ಈ ಒಂದೇ ವಿಡಿಯೋದಲ್ಲಿ ಪೂರ್ತಿ ಪಾಠ ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಈ ಕುರ್ನಾಳ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಚಾನೆಲ್ಗೆ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂದರೆ ಕೂಡಲೇ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಆಗಿ ಸತೀಶ್ ವೈ ಡಿಡಂಟ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸತೀಶ್ ವೈ ಡಿಡಂಟ್ ಯು ಕಮ್ ಟು ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಟುಡೇ Satish, why didn't you come to school today? Surrender had to repeat the question three times before Satish heard him. He was lying on the bed, his eyes closed. Sweat glistened on his brows. No, I am not well. Replied Satish. Of late, he had been down with something or the other. Why? What's the matter with you, Satish? His friend asked with concern. He put his hand on his forehead to feel it. I don't know, Surinder. It's been pretty bad since the last operation on my leg. I get these terrible headaches and then feel as if everything is going dark and silent. I feel miserable. But why are you speaking so softly? I can barely hear you. Surrender gave him a strange look. He had certainly not been speaking softly. Has he lost his hearing? Wondered Surrender. Poor Satish. He had been ill ever since he came back from the holiday in Kashmir the previous year. There had been an accident when he went hiking with his father and brother Ender. They were crossing a rickety bridge over some rapids. The boys stood and looked down at the swirling water below them. Look how the water is rushing at that spot. Sadish pointed out to his brother. Just then his foot slipped and losing his balance, he fell into the rapids. His screams were lost in the rushing sound of the water. When he regained consciousness, his legs were in a plaster cast and his head hurt badly. He was bruised and aching all over. Though his legs healed, they remained weak, requiring several operations on them. Worse, he suffered frequently from bouts of fever and infections, especially of the ear. Seeing that Sadish was in pain, Surrender now got up to go. Will you come to school tomorrow? Surrender asked. Sadish shook his head. A slow tear trickled down his cheek after Surrender left. It felt as if some huge weight was pressing upon his head making everything seem far away and silent. He felt helpless and upset at being confined to bed as he was. The silence was the worst. Everything seemed like scenes from some pantomime show. He wanted to scream to break the silence, but didn't. For the 8 year old boy, this was terrible. The doctors didn't know the cause, except that it was caused by medicines given to treat his legs. Due to his frequent absence and his hearing problem, the school he was attending till then, informed his father Mr. Avtar Narain, that they couldn't keep Sadish. We will have to look for a new school. Sadish shook his head saying, No. He didn't want to go to a school where he couldn't talk to the other children, where everyone would make fun of his deafness. Beta, you have to go to school and learn. What will you do in life if you don't get education, eh? He asked his son. 
Sadish heard snatches of his words, but knew what he was saying. After a lot of persuasion, he finally agreed to go along to the new school. But this school didn't want him for the same reason. This is a school for normal boys. Why don't you take your son to the school for deaf and dumb children? Asked the headmaster of the school, bluntly. Avtar Narain was angered. My son is not dumb, sir. His hearing is a little bad. He is under treatment and will soon be fine. He argued, but in vain. Other schools had the same to say. In despair, father and son returned home. Though Avtar Narain felt shattered, he wouldn't give up hope. After the unsuccessful expedition to the schools, Sadish became very moody. He couldn't talk freely with anyone because he was unable to hear a single word. His brother Ender sat for hours with him and talked to him, teaching him words and pronunciation. Unable to bear the taunts and teasing of the children in the neighborhood, Sadish even avoided going out to play. His father and Inder spent time with him every day, talking to him, trying to teach him things. If you want to get on in life, you have to read a lot. You can learn a great deal of things just by reading. His father told Sadish, giving him an arm full of books. Sadish leafed through them the life of Garibaldi, translated into Urdu by Lala Lajpat Rai the works of Munshi Prem Chand, Sarat Chandra and several others. It was as if a whole world opened out for him. Sadish became a voracious reader. The books however, were all serious works meant for older children and sometimes even for adults. They made him feel depressed and left a deep impression upon his sensitive mind. He came to know of another world through them, a world of suffering and anguish. He brooded long and hard about why there was so much suffering in the world, while his own world looked comfortable in comparison. All he could do was sit and stare out of the window or read. He felt lonely and full of despair in his plight. One day, when he was looking gloomily into the far corner of the garden, he saw a bird that was unlike any he had ever seen before. It had a longish tail and a black crest. But the most interesting thing about the bird was its restless energy. Its eyes kept darting here and there, its whole body ready for flight any moment. For a long time he stared at the beautiful bird. When it flew away after a glance in his direction, Sadish jumped down from his bed and took out his notebook and pencil. He sketched the bird from memory with a few deft strokes. He liked the picture and set it against the stack of books on his bedside table. He had discovered another pastime which he could indulge in, sitting on his bed. He began filling pages and pages with doodles. His strokes varied with his moods angry, soothing and humorous. He had always been good at Urdu calligraphy and so, sketching came naturally to him. However, his father was not amused. He took away all the notebooks he had drawn on. This is an idle pastime. You would do better to read and get some knowledge. Why do you take away his source of entertainment? Oh, that. I don't want him to start thinking that he can make a living out of drawing. Artists make a pittance and live in poverty. It is no career for a bright boy. He has to study if he has to make something out of his life. Besides, his hearing may return any time. When it does, he must be prepared to go back to school, mustn't he? 
It has been more than three years since he became ill. How do you possibly think that he can recover his hearing? Asked his mother. She felt hopeless about her son's condition. But Sadish's father wasn't about to lose hope. Why decide that he is going to remain deaf all his life? We must always be optimistic about his chances of recovering. Several visits to the doctors followed, with nothing improving for Sadish. He remained in his silent world, the only solace for him being painting. He managed to paint and draw in spite of his father's opposition. One day, when he was busy mixing the colors on his palette, he became aware of his father standing at the door. He looked up to find him staring at the painting intently. Sadish reddened, but continued with his mixing. Slowly his father came into the room and sat next to his son. You want to do this very badly, don't you? He asked. Had Sadish had the power of hearing, he would have heard the tremor in his father's voice. As it was, he only he only read his lips. He didn't reply. Avtar Narain put his hand on Sadish's shoulder. Sadish was unable to believe that his father was not angry with him for painting. Moments later, his father left the room. When he returned a couple of hours later, his arms were full of paints, brushes of all shapes and sizes and several rolls of drawing sheets. He carefully set them down on Sadish's table. Pitaji. Began Sadish slowly. His father nodded his head, a smile breaking at the corners of his mouth. His eyes remain sad, though. They are for you, Satish. I will find out the best school of arts for you. You will learn arts and make your life in your chosen field. Sadish's eyes filled with tears, and he did an uncharacteristic thing. He hugged his father tightly, his heart full of love for his stern father who had at last accepted that his destiny lay in canvas and paint. Within a short time he learned more than just painting. He learned about life. It is this boy now popularly known as Sadish Gujral. Sadish Gujral is among the foremost artists of India. He is one of the few artists who is accomplished in several art forms like painting, sculpture and architecture. Sadish Gujral is also a writer. Exhibitions of his works have been held all over the world and displayed in prestigious museums like the Museum of Modern Art, New York, the Hiroshima Collection, Washington and the National Gallery of Modern Art, New Delhi. He has published four books of his works in various arts. He was awarded the Order of the Crown for the best architectural design of the 20th century for his design of the Belgian Embassy in New Delhi. He has also been honored with the Padma Vibhushan. His life of achievement is ample proof that physical disability is no barrier to success. <laughs>